We are very glad to have Krishna Kshetra Swami with us, who will be speaking about the topic of Lord Jagannath comes west. And he will not be joining us in person for this year's Rata Yatra here in Berlin. Uh, but he has joined us in the past and we hope he will join us in the future again, maybe next year. But to get us into the mood and to uh, prepare us internally for the Raja Yatra, we will be hearing from him about how Jagannath came to the West. And later on, we will be hearing from Sachinandan Swami about the topic, the universal nature of Lord Jagannath. So without any further ado, I will hand over to Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu. And thank you all for this opportunity. Um, I will say a few prayers and then we can begin. Uh, I would like to, in a couple of minutes, show slides if it's possible to share screen. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya. Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale, Shimate, Bhakti Vedanta, Swamin Itinamine. Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, Paschatyadesha Dharine, Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyascha, Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha, Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Nama. E Krishna Karana Sindhu Dinabando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhunityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gora Bhaktivinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So yes, our topic will be um, to begin this discussion. Um, Lord Jagannath comes west. I see that His Holiness Sachinanan Swami has joined us. <laughs> so we'll be hearing from him in a few minutes and I'll do my best to keep uh, to the schedule. Now let's see if I can share the screen if uh, the system will do what I hope it will do. This one, share. And then full screen. How is that? Does that uh, look like something? Okay, good. <laughs> So, um, it's a glorious history, I would say, uh, the, how Lord Jagannath comes west. Of course, uh, Lord Jagannath came west by the desire of his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. And that desire, we may say, began in early childhood, Let's see if this works now. Changing slide. Oh, maybe I have to do this. Yeah. Um, Srila Prabhupada himself tells how when he was a small child, he wanted to perform Ratnayatra. His father said, oh, that's uh, not possible, not practical. The small Abhay Charan, uh, was seen crying by a neighbor. And the neighbor man said, what's the problem? And when he heard what was the problem, he said, we will do it. 
we will make Ratha Yatra, Jagannath Ratha Yatra. And so that was the beginning. Fast forward many years to 1967. Srila Prabhupada is in San Francisco and also in San Francisco is Malati Devi Dasi, who comes to see Srila Prabhupada bringing with her a very small wooden image, which she found in a kind of, let's say, a gift shop. Uh, she has no idea what it is, but she thinks maybe it's something to do with India. So she comes to ask Prabhupada. When Prabhupada sees the murti, this little murti of Jagannath, he immediately lights up. He makes, he folds his hands and he says, oh, Lord Jagannath has come. He explained to Malati there are two other figures, Subhadra and Maladeva. Malati says, oh yes, they were there also. She runs back to the shop and she gets the, th uh, the two remaining, Subhadra and Maladeva, brings them back. Srila Prabhupada immediately commissions, engages Shamasundar Prabhu, who is an experienced, skilled carpenter in uh, preparing large forms of Jagannath, Subhadra, and Maladev. <laughs> so here he is on the roof of uh, the Frederick Street Temple, I believe it was, in Hate Street, Frederick Street, Hate Street, not sure. Uh, and you see the copy on the top of the large image, you see the small image of Balaram. So he's copying uh, this small image uh, in this large form. And he did this in time so that it would be possible to have Rata Yatra in San Francisco, July 9th, 1967. Notice uh, the way the deities are positioned. They're in facing three different directions <laughs> on this uh, flatbed truck that was converted for this purpose. And uh, there was a lot of discussion. Srila Prabhupada was in San Francisco at this time, but his health was uh, not good. And he was resting, not directly in San Francisco. He was in a place called Stinson Beach. They had rented a nice house for him north of San Francisco. And it was a, a question that was, um, the big question for the devotees uh, as the day for Ratayatra was approaching, whether or not Srila Prabhupada would join them. Um, but in the end, he decided, no, uh, he would not be able to join them. However, uh, he wrote a letter on July 11th to Brahmananda, in New York, in which he said, uh, after describing about his situation and how he is well situated, he says, the only difficulty is that I cannot go to the temple on account of the zigzag course of the road in crossing the mountains. Anyway, the devotees are coming here and the Rata Yatra festival was performed with great pomp. Pomp means um, very elaborately. More than 500 people followed the procession to the beach, and there were about two dozen cars 
they distributed thousands of chapatis. <laughs> and at last, Sri Jagannath, Subhadra, and Baladev kindly came here in our house and will stay here for one week and then return. So after the Ratiyatra, the devotees brought Lord Jagannath to Srila Prabhupada. Okay. Um, now, let's see if we can manage this. This is a short video. Uh, construction of the Rata in San Francisco. Okay. <clears throat> I believe that was not the preparation of the 1967 uh, Rata, possibly 1968. We'll see some more pictures of early ones. But you see here that uh, devotees from early on uh, got the spirit of uh, promotion, of advertising, and they were quite creative. We see here posters from three uh, successive years in San Francisco. And um, so they had a sense of wanting to publicize, to make uh, as attractive for as many people as possible. Now, I think it's important to remember the cultural atmosphere in San Francisco at this time. This is 1967. Actually, this is 68 in this picture. Uh, but this is the height of, yeah, what came to be known, I guess, the hippie movement at the center uh, the main center of this hippie movement uh, in a particular part of San Francisco, the Haight-Ashbury District uh, and Golden Gate Park. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, the summer of love, I think they called it in 1967, uh, and uh, the phrase flower power. Uh, was becoming popular because this was also the time of the Vietnam War and uh, the American government, the American military was deeply uh, involved in Vietnam and there was increasing uh, dissatisfaction among the youth uh, with this whole trend, uh, this whole involvement. So here we can see this, this spirit, uh, Lord Jagannath, in a sense, fit right in, in the midst of this mood and spirit of San Francisco. Here we see Srila Prabhupada, this is 1969. Um, Tamal Krishna Goswami is next to him on Prabhupada's right. Uh, here you see also Jayananda Prabhu, who is uh, 
um, sort of, he, he became Mr. Ratayatra. He, he was always enthusiastic for organ, organizing Ratayatra. He was very uh, mm, essential, we can say, in this uh, making Ratayatra happen. 1972, San Francisco. Um, you notice on the right this huge image of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> uh, just, you know, expressing the, this jubilant, adventuresome spirit uh, the devotees had at this time uh, under Srila Prabhupada's inspiration. Is a sign there, the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Um, so, and they were indeed attracting large crowds. And this looks like much more than 500 people. Uh, increasing numbers of people in increasing numbers of cities. And this is a famous photograph of Srila Prabhupada, again, San Francisco, 1974. And what I find, I think we all find striking about this photo is uh, the, the sense of Prabhupada's victory, uh, that he's coming to the very climax, the glory of the Krishna consciousness movement, is uh, is being expressed here, and of course also how much Srila Prabhupada was opening his arms to welcome everyone uh, to uh, come to Krishna to take shelter of Krishna. Again, Jayananda Prabhu, uh, who became the icon, Iskand's icon of Jagannath Ratayatra, such that now. Uh, his picture is always present whenever we make Rata Yatra. Um, devotees make sure that a photograph of Jayananda Prabhu is also present because we like to remember him and we like to feel that he is also present with us in uh, the procession wherever it may be. Ratayatra expands from San Francisco uh, to New York, we see here in 1976. Uh, and it looks to me like this is on Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue, and Fifth Avenue, New York is the place to have a parade, a procession. So to get permission uh, to have this festival there, was really a great victory. London, 1972, here Prabhupada sitting uh, and speaking strongly on the glories of Lord Jagannath. And in 73, also in London, uh, I was fortunate to be present there. I believe you were also there, Sachinandan Swami. And uh, we, we had uh, the amazing experience of seeing Srila Prabhupada dancing in the Rata Yatra um, with tears rolling down his eyes. And we could understand, I could understand years later that for Prabhupada, this was a real victory march, uh, that the... Mm, the center of the British, um, the British Empire, London, was now defeated. That is to say, <laughs> Lord Jagannath was having his victory march from Marble Arch to Trafalgar Square. Prabhupada was so, so happy about this. And so to other cities, Boston, Brighton uh, on the south coast of the UK. Again, London we see on the right. And Hong Kong, I've been fortunate to take part. This is with a smaller rata. Oh, I think the bigger one is behind in this photo. Um, 
What's intriguing here is that the Ratna Yantra takes place on Christmas Eve. And why it takes place on Christmas Eve is because um, the devotees get permission to have it on Christmas Eve because uh, the uh, city officials close off the entire area uh, where the Ratha Yatra takes place um, because thousands, lakhs of people are out on the streets celebrating. And so Ratha Yatra fits right in. <clears throat> Los Angeles uh, continues uh, every year, as far as I know, <clears throat> excuse me, to have Ratha Yatra on Venice Beach, uh, which is uh, on the west side of Los Angeles. And Washington Square Park, um, is one of the significant places where the Christian consciousness movement began. Uh, Tompkins Square Park is more famously known, but uh, just a few blocks away is Washington Square Park. Uh, the color and festive spirit of Ratha Yatra is attractive for, for people. They may have no clue, no idea what it's all about. Uh, of course, the depth, the profundity of Ratha Yatra we understand from uh, Krishna Das Kaviraj's uh, elaborate descriptions in Chaitanya Charitamrita. But what we understand is that uh, Jagannath, being Lord of the universe, is. Uh, spreading his glory and spreading his mercy by his glance. Uh, everyone who sees, sees him is elevated, um, liberated, it is said, and it's certainly a lasting memory for anyone who experiences Ratha Yatra. Um, people may be amused, surprised, bewildered, uh, but Lord Jagannath simply smiles. I find in particular this uh, image of Ratha Yatra in Siberia on the right, uh, especially uh, charming and stri striking. And I, I, I like to wonder, what would the six Goswamis say <laughs> seeing, seeing Lord Jagannath? Or what would Swarup Damodar, the residents of Puri, uh, could they possibly imagine that such thing was happening? Uh, East Europe, of course, uh, such a festival would not have been possible before, yeah, before 1989. So for the last 30 years or so, uh, now Lord Jagannath is coming also not just west, but also east. And even if there is a pandemic, this is not going to stop Lord Jagannath. Here are pictures from Buenos Aires, um, where they made uh, one, one car, one automobile into the Rata. And Lord Jagannath Subhadra Baladev, look, quite happy in this arrangement. Um, and the people are all observing and celebrating with their masks despite, despite everything. Uh, such a presentation would not be complete without images of Rata Yatra Berlin, <laughs> especially because this is the Berlin uh, temple event and in anticipation for this, uh, is it Saturday or Sunday you're having? Uh, we need to make some anticipation here. And I like to remember back uh, to however many years ago it was on Kurfürsten 
Kurfürstendamm, when we had uh, the the king of Puri um, was with us in Berlin, and we were all very excited, and he was happy to be with us. We were excited to invite him to uh, take the honor of uh, doing the sweeping before Lord Jagannath as it's done in Puri. And he very politely and firmly said, I'm sorry, uh, but this would not be possible. It's a strict rule uh, that I do that, uh, that ritual only in Puri. And if it would be seen that I would be doing it outside of Puri, I, even though I'm the king, would be in big trouble. <laughs> uh, nonetheless, he uh, took part in the fest festival, the procession, he even walked barefoot uh, on Kurfürst and on Laga, as would be the tradition. Um, so, of course, these are just a few out of so many places. Uh, perhaps someone could uh, make a, a research and find out just how many different places in the world Lord Jagannath has appeared. Um, but um, so many places Lord Jagannath is there blessing the people of the world and smiling. And uh, I just want to end with Mukunda Goswami describing going back to the 1967 uh, San Francisco Festival. Uh, he's describing in his book, Miracle on Second Avenue, uh, the event. He says, outside, the deities were now on the truck ready to go. Subhadra, looking straight out back, Jagannath and Baladeva facing either side. About 10 people sat on the flatbed, their legs dang dangling off the edges of the truck, holding handfuls of sm smoking incense. So just try to picture the scene. A large kirtan party with kartals, drums, tambourines, and flutes chanted beside the stationary truck. The speaker system we used in Golden Gate Park was fixed to the back of the truck. The large speakers positioned between the canopy and the driver's cabin. The amplifier was powered by the tiny tiger. Uh, apparently this was a, a generator, uh, which was uh, apparently run with a a, uh, a petrol motor, <laughs> which sat next to the devotees on the wooden truck bed. Shama Sundar sat in the driver's seat with the engine idling. So is he coming? He asked. No, he's not strong enough, I said, referring to Srila Prabhupada. But let's do the parade for him. He's the energy behind it. And I think that is a very nice uh, phrase to remember as you're celebrating Ratayatra in Berlin this weekend. Uh, he, Srila Prabhupada, is the energy behind it. Mukunda Goswami goes on, someone made a space for me on the flatbed and I jumped up just as Shama Sundar pulled away from the curb. I started up the tiny tiger and plugged in the temple microphone and began to lead the chanting. Immediately, I saw a problem. The generator was going to drown out the singing and every other sound as well. Anyway, the time, uh, I don't want to take more time. He goes on to describe the struggles they had with this generator. They put it inside the cabin where Shama Sundar was driving with closed windows, uh, which would have asphyxiated him. It would have 
um, made him lose his consciousness, if not his life. Uh, so Mukunda was dealing with that. <laughs> and, uh, so there was uh, quite some uh, drama going on in this first Ratha Yatra. I'm sure you all have stories to tell also from your experiences with uh, Lord Jagannath, his service uh, in general, and specifically with Ratha Yatra. And I'm sure there are also stories of people who have first encountered the devotees on Ratha Yatra. So it really has um, become uh, a trademark, I would say, of the Krishna consciousness movement, that Jagannath, the Lord of the universe, the universal Lord is seen um, throughout this planet. And despite the complaints of uh, the, the priests and the officials of the Jagannath Puri temple that we do these uh, processions, these festivals on days other than the official day in Puri, which they follow very strictly, following a uh, long tradition and following the lunar calendar. Despite all of this, we understand Lord Jagannath is very happy uh, to, to celebrate with the devotees and to share uh, himself with the public on all sorts of days, any days, uh, whether in the summer or in the winter of Siberia uh, or in the nighttime of uh, Christmas Eve in Hong Kong, Lord Jagannath is blessing everyone. And behind it all, we understand, uh, is the energy of Srila Prabhupada, the energy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Shri Jagannath Subhadra Baladeva Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharaj. And uh, with that, I think we can hand over directly to Sachinandan Swami, who has joined us and who will uh, be also attending us on Saturday. So if you happen to be here in Berlin or somewhere in the area, then you can also join us and see him. But if you, even if you cannot, uh, you, we will be hearing from him about the universal nature of Lord Jagannath. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, please accept my most humble obeisances and my great joy to see our Krishna Chetra Maharaj and your very wonderful, um, let us say, uh, um, presentation which tuned us uh, in and uh, encouraged us to also give our best uh, so that we can have a wonderful Ratha festival. Namom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Padestaya Bhutale Simate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paskatyade Satarine Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadha Shri Vasadi Go Bhakta Vrinda Jai Jagannath Jai Jagannath Jai Baladeva Jaya Subhadra Jai Raghunath Jai Raghunath Jai Baladeva Jai Subhadra This these words, this song is reverberating or echoing 
all over the world due to that little boy who cried in Calcutta. <laughs> we must have Ratha Yatra. <laughs> uh, the seed was given then, and uh, from there it expanded over the time, all over the world, as our Krishna Chaitanya Maharaj has so nicely told us. He has told us this, not without explaining that um, there is some controversy uh, hold by the more traditional parts of pandas in, in Puri. They have the opinion um, that it is not proper to do the Ratha Yatra outside <coughs> a certain um, date. But then how could the Lord bless all the world? And isn't his name Jagannath? And not Purinat, as Prabhupada uh, asked the same pandas. He is the Lord of the whole Jagat, the whole universe, and not of the of a particular area in Orissa and a particular culture. If God is God, he must be God for everyone. Um, and uh, I would like to talk today on the universal nature of Lord Jagannath by bringing a very specific uh, quality of Krishna uh, to your attention. And this uh, quality is that he reciprocates with all his worshippers according to the way they worship him. Uh, in this way, he is a very tolerant Lord, a very universal Lord. Mm. Lord Jagannath's mood is very nicely described in the Skanda Purana. Dharmigraha Pramanena Yadrik Trishta Saevasa. The Lord appears exactly according to the inclination of the worshipper to serve him. Uh, or as mm. uh, Vindavandas Thakur in a later work in the Chaitanya Bhagavad says, Ye Rupa Chintyadase. Se rupa hoya. And according to the conception the devotee has of the Lord, in that way the Lord will manifest himself. Thus you will see Lord Jagannath being worshipped as Buddha by the Buddhists. He is worshipped as Ganesh on one day with the Hativesha. Uh, by those devotees who worship the Lord with an elephant trunk. And Lord Jagannath is worshipped by the Ram Bhakta. Uh, at that time, he becomes green in his face and he holds in his hands bow and arrow. In that way in which a devotee worships the Lord, in that way, he responds. This uh, responsive nature that gives uh, encouragement to the devotee. We know when we turn to the Lord in sincere devotion, he will respond to us. First of all, he will hear us. And more than that, he will listen to us. And then he will do something to respond to us. Uh, no matter how imperfect our worship is, no matter how limited our understanding is, Ye Yatamang Prabhadyante, Krishna says, I reward my devotees according to their degree of surrender, the way they worship him. 
This is very nicely illustrated in a pastime, which I would like to share with you. The great Ram Bhakta, Tulsidas, had read in the Padma Purana that in Kali Yuga, this age, the Lord appears in Puri and unites all the different lineages or sampradayas. And he is there for all of them. And with high anticipation, and anticipation, the English word is, with high feelings of love, he, Tulsi went to uh, uh, the place where he was staying, Tulsi does, I think a place in Gujarat, as if I'm correctly remembering. He went all the way to Puri. And when he entered the temple of Puri, he expected Lord Ramachandra to be there on the altar because Shastra, Padma Purana has said, uh, in Kali Yuga, the Lord is is standing in Puri, he's there in Puri, and he is re uh, uniting all the sampradayas, all the lineages, he's there for them. So he went in the temple, but when he looked at the altar, he saw a blackish complexioned uh, Lord with huge eyes and a huge smile with arms protruding. And then next to him, he could also not recognize anyone. There was a, a, a smaller form, uh, all in white, and then still next to that form, another huge form with huge eyes. Tulsi broke down crying. He had wanted to meet the Lord, but what was... This Lord was unknown to him. So in great disappointment, he left. He turned around on his left foot and left and walked for seven kilometers. It was uh, uh, late and the sun set. So some of the way he had to walk in darkness. And then finally, he came to a village. Everyone was already sleeping. And he thought, found a banyan tree and he just threw himself down and cried and cried. Meanwhile, in the temple, Subhadra turned to Jagannath and said, you are impossible. You are breaking your word. Haven't you said that anyone who comes to take your darshan will obtain your sweet Mahaprasad. One of your devotees has come. He is crying now, six kilometers away from here, and he is hungry. And also Lord Balaram looked over to Jagannath and said, that's not fair. <laughs> At that moment, the heart of Jagannath was moved. A beautiful golden complexion form came out of him, form of a Brahmana. After some time, this form, this personality, manifested from Lord Jagannath. <laughs> and came to that village where Tulsidas was sobbing and crying, not finding any sleep because he was hungry. And then he said, hey, is there someone called Tulsidas? Tulsidas was in no mood to answer. Uh, I have something to eat uh, for Tulsidas. So Tulsidas came up to look and there was this golden formed Brahmana holding a golden plate with delic delicacies, oh, the English word, delicate preparations. <laughs> Very del delicious, delicious is the English word. Mm -hmm. And he, 
Is it for me? For me? Yes, uh, said the Brahmana. Your Lord has um, sent me. He said, you are hungry. And he said also, you should bring back that golden plate. It's his golden plate. And when you come next time, you should look a little bit more closer. <laughs> With this, the Brahmana disappeared, but left the golden plate for Tulsi to eat. Now, he was so hungry, he, he just, I don't know how he ate, but I can imagine he got some palm leaves and put the preparations on the leaves, a leaf and ate from there. He was curious. I mean, how did the food come to me? The Lord must have seen me. How did he know I'm here? And he said I should come back and look a little bit closer. That means have I overlooked something? So the next morning, very early, when the sun was just rising, he went back to the uh, temple uh, and uh, he, uh, there were pandas there already. Ah, oh, here's the golden plate. He just gave them the golden plate and he went forward. And whom did he see on the altar? A greenish complexioned, uh, beautiful, handsome uh, warrior, a ruler, the best of all personalities, Lord Ram. Uh, he was holding a bow and an arrow. Next to him was Sita Devi. And next to her, Lakshman. And uh, at that moment, uh, our uh, Tulsidas could understand something about the nature of the Lord. In whatever way you worship the Lord, that's how he reveals himself. Some worship him as a little stone, but when they worship Shalagam Shila, the Lord in this little form, they feel uh, uh, Goparaj. Oops, here, the personality with the flute comes forth. And Lord Chaitanya worshipped Lord Jagannath. Now, when he came to Puri, already when he came to Puri the first time, he saw a blackish boy on the top of the mm, temple, waving him, come, 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 come. And when he, uh, whenever he took darshan of Lord Jagannath, he saw the flute playing um, uh, Lord Krishna on the banks of the Yamuna. My dear devotees, God cannot be seen with these eyes. These eyes cannot reach very far. God can only be seen by, your, by a heart which is full of consciousness, of bhava, Krishna consciousness. And then he is seen. What do you see with these eyes? <laughs> Is the moon in the branches of a tree? Once there was a child, he asked his father, show me the moon. And the father pointed out here, he is between the second and the third branch. Of course, he is not there. The moon is far away in the universe. But uh, uh, by showing him the, the direction he could see. There are three ways in which you can see the do look at the deities and only in one way can you see the deities. There's the form which you see when you look with your when your eyes scan the deity mm. and then you think he is made of wood. Mm. Then there is the form which you see with your intelligence. There you see he's a symbol for something divine. Like the postal horn, which you will find on 
the postal cars in Germany, they show, this is a post here. It's a symbol for a huge operation that delivers letters. So the intellectual with the intellect, you can see, yes, this is a symbol for God. But when you look with the Krishna consciousness, the Bhavanamrita, the nectar of Bhava, then you see the all spiritual a lot. And seeing the deity is not an eye exercise. It's a heart matter. It's a matter of the heart, a devotional heart. Premanjana, with love, you can see him. Otherwise, you see something. You see the moon in the branches. Uh, something that can is still helpful, of course. No? That's the mercy of the Lord that He comes in a comes in a form and a place where you can see Him. Uh, let me just watch. Yes, here we have a little bit more time, my dear devotees. I want to end this uh, by preparing you a little. Uh, I want to give you. Seven reasons why Lord Jagannath is the most merciful Lord. Uh, first of all, his name Jagannath means he is for the entire universe. <laughs> he is not a sectarian God. Second is, when there are festivals, uh, usually only Utsava deities, smaller deities which are uh, uh, there for the festivals come out and leave the altar. Uh, these festival deities are also called Vijay Vikraha. But when there is Ratha Yadra, the Lord in his Mula Vikraha, the form which is there on the altar, leaves the altar and is carried. Uh, by his devotees on the Ratha Yatra festival. This is extraordinary. No other Lord is doing this. The third reason is, in the temples, the Lord is only allowing highly trained Brahmanas to worship him. During the Ratha Yatra festival, the Lord eases up all the rules and regulations. He, uh, the, you can offer him foodstuffs, bring it to the altar. You can even, that's in Puri, you can even embrace him. Yes, I'm serious. You can climb up the cart in Puri. And uh, if you are adventurous, <laughs> you can push your way, the Indian way, through these crowds of people who are like ants all over the cart. And you can move forward and then down, I mean, throw yourself down and embrace the Lord right where his lotus feet is. Jagannath, the Lord of the universe, becomes Jagat Bandhu, the friend of the universe, in other words. The fifth reason why we say Lord Jagannath is so merciful. And these are reasons which are not related to his procession, Ratha Yata. He has stretched out arms. Have you noted in Krishna Chaita Maharaj's very inspiring journey through, through Lord Jagannath, following Lord Jagannath's journey through the West? He has such stretched out arms. It means everyone come, come. Come, whoever you are, pilgrim, priest, or sinner, <laughs> I will embrace you. I will accept you the way you are. Um, the sixth reason why we say Lord Jagannath is so merciful is because his eyes are wide open. Have you noted that there are no eyelids, these things which you use if you close your eyes? No, Lord Jagannath has no eyelids. Why not? He never sleeps. King Indra Dumna Maharaj asked him, uh, please receive your devotees for 21 hours a day. 
And that's how the temple is open. 24 hours a day, you can go. The Lord never closes his eyes. Then you might ask, what happens when the uh, altar doors finally close? Is he taking a rest for these three hours? No. In these three hours between clo behind closed doors, he accepts or he receives the devatas, the servants from the higher planetary systems. In this way, 24 hours a day, the Lord's eyes are wide open and never close because he doesn't need, uh, uh, I, uh, um, let us say, therefore he has no eyelids because he doesn't need it. He is always awake. Seventh reason why Lord Jagannath is so universally merciful. Mm. Uh, if you would see a photo of Lord Jagannath, I don't know if it is possible technically that Krishna Chedra Maharaj, you share your screen again with a photo of Lord Jagannath and then Maybe we should not attempt this technical uh, acrobatics. Yeah. Technically speaking, it should be possible. Yeah. And I could keep on talking. Yes. Okay. So, Prabhuji, let's try something uh, daring. Krishna Chetta Maharaj, please choose a photo where we can see Lord. Ah, yes, here it is. If you look, do you have a, a bigger size photo of Lord Jagannath? Aha, uh -huh. it's coming, he's coming closer. Yes, I think this is good enough. Um, can you please, now everyone, please look. There are two columns where you see three Jagannaths, three deities. Go to the middle column to the upper photo and look at Lord Jagannath. See, around his eyes, there is, it's all reddish. Can you see? It's all red. Why? Listen to this wonderful explanation. When a human being feels compassion for, towards someone, there will be a little spot usually in the corner of his eye, which is a little reddish. That happens when you feel, oh, this person is so good. Let me help him. I want to do something for his benefit. Then this little red spot in the corner of the eye develops. Now, if someone is very compassionate, the spot is bigger. But Lord Jagannath is so compassionate <laughs> that he is, he is all red. He's all compassion around his eyes. Uh, and so is Balaram and Lady Subhadra. There is this unconditional compassion. And Prabhupada speaks about it. He says, in Orissa, 90% of the people are fish eaters. That includes also the pandas, the, the priests. <laughs> but Lord Jagannath accepts them equally and doesn't want to leave them. He is very merciful. He doesn't look at these outer qualifications or disqualifications. Mm. This seventh reason uh, is very much highlighted. Uh, Prabhupada, therefore, he said... In a letter to Hanuman Prasad Potter, the deities worshipped in the temples are Jagannath Swami with Balaram and Subhadra and Radha Krishna. When we first start a temple, we start with Jagannath Swami. My Guru Maharaj recommended temples of Jagannath in these outside countries. So I was inspired to establish, first of all, Jagannatha Swami, because he is kind, even to the Mlechas. 
This is the universal nature of Lord Jagannath. He responds to everyone. He will respond to you. Please, when you on Saturday, those of you who are in Berlin, uh, take a little minute, a tiny second, where you are alone with the Lord. Stand before the Lord. Tell him uh, what is on your heart. Ask him uh, for further directions in your life. And you will see, most probably, when you are uh, able to, uh, to not just have lip service, but when you have a, a heart concern and you address the Lord, you will obtain an answer because he is uh, reciprocating. He's reciprocally responsive. This was one of Prabhupada's amazing usage of the English language. Mm. Yeah, uh, it was an honor to be with all of you. I'm very aware of the time uh, and I don't wish to go further than our allotted time, but I'm very happy that I saw in the gallery a few of you. I saw even devotees from America and from Persia. It was a genuine pleasure to see. Uh, also, our Rajesh Patel was there. <laughs> Centro Kultur Vedas. Uh, 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 Pushpa is there. He is uh, from Delhi, is there. Uh, Alexander St uh, St Stein was there. Many of you are there whom I know affectionately. Uh, please, my dear devotees, let us celebrate, if possible, in Berlin. Uh, I, but you are from all parts of the world, so it's not possible for you to come to Berlin. But in this, in this time, Find some time to connect with Lord Jagannath because this is the time when everywhere there are festivals. Uh, try to get a good photo from Lord Jagannath, pray to him, uh, and uh, he will respond because he is the Lord of the universe and very kind and responds to everyone. Mm. Uh, who's this uh, Krishna Laya is here, Hare Krishna. Uh, so many of you. I, I will not be able to greet all of you mm, uh, uh, affectionately. It will be difficult. I saw Clemens also. Wow. And Kalyana Giriraj Das. <laughs> Hari Bol. Uh, wonderful. Good. So, uh, let us turn back to our must, our host. I think it was Karuna Shakti Prabhu. Please, uh, um, I'm, I'm finished. You please uh, do the conclusion of this call. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Maharajas, uh, Krishna Kshetra Swami and Sachinandan Swami. I think we have come to the conclusion of this uh, wonderful event, which is also a meditation. However, I have seen there is one question in the chat box, which I think is a very good uh, meditation. Dira Lalita Mataji writes, Hare Krishna, thank you so very much for your wonderful classes. I have a question. Is there a story behind devotees pulling the card of Lord Jagannath? Where are they pulling the card to? So I know that in Puri, the pulling goes along the Grand Road to the Gundicha Mandir, which is the summer residence of Jagannath. However, um, as we are, will be pulling the cards as well. We will probably, when we are in Berlin, not meditating so much on the Gundi Chamandir in Puri, but I do know there is a somewhat more esoteric meaning or a more uh, not so well-known meaning. Uh, maybe one of you or both of you can say one of two um, words or sentences regarding uh, our meditation that we will have when we pull Jagannath. Wonderful. Let us first hear from our Krishna Chetra Maharaj. 
Hare Krishna. Well, of course, uh, as followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we like to remember Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mood in Ratha Yatra. And I highly recommend um, to, we say in English, to prime the pump uh, of your mood of devotion for Ratha Yatra that you read uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila, chapter 13, uh, specifically describing the Ratha Yatra in Puri with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And of course, what is Mahaprabhu's mood? He is remembering the mood of the residents of Raja as they visited Kurukshetra, uh, where uh, Lord Krishna had come um, with all of his associates from Dwaraka. And uh, the, mm, the incongruence of the two uh, moods, uh, the Aishvarya mood from Dwaraka and the Madhurya mood from Braja uh, led the residents of Braja to determine that they must bring Lord Krishna back to Braja. And so how do they do that? They pulled him in a chariot. That The chariot of... <laughs> uh, of uh, in which Lord Krishna was present in um, in Kurukshetra, that chariot they decided we bring you to Braj because we cannot relish uh, although you are with uh, although we are with you th there is not the same feeling we cannot appreciate this mood with all the soldiers and the queens and the elephants and so on. So you must come with us. So that's the idea of the uh, pulling of the card. It's assisting, we may say, the uh, residents of Braja Vrindavan uh, to bring Lord Krishna back to Vrindavan. Uh, and Mahaprabhu is demonstrating that in his uh, in his kirtan in his sankirtan which he expanded uh, into seven groups in which he was present in all five groups simultaneously uh, uh, singing dancing and twirling circling around like a firebrand it said <laughs> making the entire the entire world tilt back and forth from the intense ecstasy of his uh, of his mood of meeting and simultaneous separation from the world. That would be my brief uh, response. But Sachinandan Maharaj, please uh, give us something more to this. Mm, thank you very much, uh, Krishna Chaitanya Maharaj. You have really uh, captured uh, the mood of the Chaitanya tradition very nicely. And please, all of you on the call, of, um, follow Maharaj's uh, advice uh, to read in the 13th chapter of the Madhya Leela of Chaitanya Charitamrita all about the Ratha Yatra festival and the, uh, there is a wonderful purport of Prabhupada there uh, where he talks um, about uh, what our Maharaj has shared with us. Uh, I would just, uh, uh, I cannot really add to this anything, but I would like to all of you to now zero in to this seen because you will capture an essence that you will be able to apply in your own uh, Ratha Yatra festival, uh, observance of Ratha Yatra. Let us just imagine Krishna 
was every day with the, his devotees in Vrindavan. He would go out in the morning, the uh, Brajbasis would follow him to the town gate, then he would go with the cowherd boys into the forest, uh, all the animals of Vrindavan, uh, the, cuc the cuckoos, the parrots, even the bees uh, uh, were with the Lord at that time. And then in the, uh, around noon, he is meeting very confidentially the gopis. He sneaks away from the cowherd boys and goes to Radhakund. Uh, and then after um, being together with the gopis and having many uh, wonderful pastimes, he uh, in the late afternoon returns with the cows and the cowherd boys and all the residents of Vindavan could not really do things in Krishna's absence. They are all there again at the town's, town gate. They look at the same direction from which Krishna has left the, uh, the, the town. And they see a huge dust cloud and soon they hear the flute play of Krishna and his cowherd boys. And then they see from Krishna's body a sapphire-like effulgence coming, and they see, wow, there, 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 the blue, the blue boy who gives life to all of us. So every day Krishna uh, is with the bridge bhasis, and he helps uh, them in various ways. He uh, protects them from demons. He protects them from Indra's wrath by lifting the Govardhan hill, they have so many uh, amazing uh, remember, um, memories of Krishna. And then all of a sudden he is not there. He leaves Vrindavan. And they are so much in anxiety with, that Krishna has left us that uh, it's described. They don't eat any longer. They, they cry tears of Pain. The, the crying of Radharani was so intense that the rocks would split. And finally they hear Krishna comes just 70 kilometers away from Vindavan to a place called Kurukshetra. So all of them go in a huge procession. Even the bulls go. <laughs> Everyone goes to see their Krishna, of course. But then after the festival in Kurukshetra is over, Krishna goes on his chariot and he, he is heading off to, to Dvaraka, a total different direction, um, thousand, uh, more than 1,000 kilometers away from Vindavan. How do they feel at this moment? My dear devotees, I have been often on airports and I have seen how especially people from Brazil uh, also, how they cry when the beloved person whom they have brought to the airport uh, disappears and goes into, behind these milk glass doors and then he proceeds to the security and flies far, far away. They cry and the children have to be soothed and so on. So the bridge passes who loved Krishna more than anything, more than their own life, uh, they, they just can't accept that Krishna leaves them. They, they no, no. And they then come and, uh, as Maharaj said, that they, they just take his chariot and they pull him in the direction of Vrindavan because they, you know, Without Krishna, their life is not possible. Just like for you and me, it's not possible without breath to exist. It is not possible. So they pull him. So this is the essence. To bring Krishna back. To bring Krishna back. This essence, we have to now, we have to put a magnifying glass on it. Zoom and see. Can we, as conditioned souls, in the year 20, 
what, where are we? 2021. Uh, can we connect with this essence? Can, very practical, in three days, can we, is, is there a connect between these two? So are these just stories which we tell? What is the practical application here? Srila Prabhupada once said, uh, the Ratha Yatra festival is a very feeling festival. <laughs> he said, it's feeling, there is some feeling there. And the idea is to pull Krishna back in our hearts. I think you will all agree with me. Uh, it would be nice to have a little bit more Krishna in our heart. <laughs> it would be nice to think more of Krishna, to be more Krishna conscious. So in Ratha Yajra, you pull, you, you, you grab the ropes and you pull. Uh, and, the, and the pulling is you pull the Lord back into your heart. Uh, uh, that's the, uh, that's, that would be a possible, possible application of the festival. Mm. Wonderful. So, yes, so uh, Karuna Shakti Prabhu, you must tell us what to do now. <laughs> I think we have come to the final conclusion of this event. And I think we have heard so many very inspiring things. And uh, yeah, we can, we can only thank all of you who have joined us, the whole audience of, uh, I can see here, 85 participants, which is quite a lot of people from all around the world and from our congregation, from other congregations. And uh, certainly many of you or some of you will be joining us on Saturday. And um, yeah, even if you're not joining us on Saturday, you can join us next week at uh, seven o'clock at the same time here on the same Zoom channel for a Bhagavad Gita class. We will be speaking about, uh, I think, chapter five, text 11. But yeah, we have a continuous study of the Bhagavad Gita. You can join us for that. Or if uh, you want to see Lord Jagannath and apply everything that you have heard today, you can join us on Saturday at I think uh, 11.30 at the Brandenburg Gate here in Berlin. And we will be uh, walking around with Jagannath or pulling the cart of Jagannath, uh, Baladev and Subhadra along the beautiful um, street of uh, Unter den Linden. And then we'll be going back and having a very nice program. And we will all be there in person and will not be an online event. So please join us. And I can see here in the chat box, people are Thanking you and um, wonderful answer, greetings from the Netherlands. Thank you so much, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, I can, or we can only extend our gratitude to all of you who have joined us and who have been here. And also, especially again to you, Sachinandan Swami and Krishna Kshita Swami. Thank you very much. And we hope to see you again very soon. Uh, if not at the Berlin Ratayatra this year, then maybe next year or hopefully before that. Hare Krishna. <laughs>